Thanks, Misty. Hmm. Hello, everybody. So good to see you. See you. <laughs> uh, so let's get started. Find your comfy spot. And like Misty said, you may want to grab a blanket. We were, yeah, we were both realizing how freezing we were. I was going to find my heated blanket <laughs> that I thought I had put away for the year. Ah, so let's just start out by even open-eyed, just taking some deep breaths into the bottom of your abdomen. So what you're going to notice is that you're, when you breathe in, your hands are going to move out. Okay, so either put one hand or two hands on your belly and let's just at your own pace, take a deep breath in. So you'll notice that as I breathe in, you can see my hand expanding towards you. And as I breathe out, my hand is moving towards my spine. So breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. You may even want to make an audible sound. It's not really a sigh. It's more of like a release of energy on the exhale. And what I want you to notice and I want you to see on the video is how when I breathe in, you'll see my shoulders slightly rise. So now in the next breath, tune into my shoulders coming down on the exhale. So just watch the shoulder height. Uh, and this may be very obvious to you, but if you're a new meditator, you may not realize literally how much the shoulders go up and down with each in-breath and out-breath. And that one way we can really tune into the body and tune into relaxation is by noticing those subtle movements of the body. So just for one breath, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to tune into just one breath where you're gonna be directing the, the breath down into your belly. So you're gonna feel the belly push out and then you're gonna feel the belly contract. And I want you just to be completely focused for the next three breaths, just right here, okay? Just on the belly. Let's do three deep breaths together, in through the nose, out through the mouth, audible sound if you want to. <sighs> Good. Now on the next three breaths, what I want you to tune into is just the rise and fall of the shoulders. That's it. Okay. That's all you're, you're focusing, you're, you're like putting your awareness right on the shoulders and it's just for three breaths. So it's not for a long time, which is, you know, where we, we need to start with focus and concentration. And if you're like, uh, I'm a long-term meditator, Remember beginner's mind. So remember that we can all come back to the basics and benefit. So on this next breath, what we're focusing on is our shoulders, just the up and down of the shoulders, just for three breaths. So I want you to close your eyes and go internal and just feel the rise of your shoulders and feel that as you exhale, the exhale is a letting go. The body is literally letting go. And so the shoulders naturally relax. And I just want you to tune. You're not exaggerating anything. You're just noticing that the body relaxes naturally with the out breath. So just tune into that. So three deep breaths, be in your shoulders. And 
if you want to make a sound or a tone on the exhale, that's fine. I'm not going to just so there's an absence of sound for you. Two more breaths. Great. And opening the eyes again. Okay, the next thing we're going to focus on in our bodies is just the expansion of the chest wall. So if you watch my hands when I breathe in, so you can see my hands expanding around my chest wall. Feel the stretch. So you don't need to put your hands here unless you want to. Um, that can be a nice way to start. And let's, let's increase the number of breaths so you have a little more time to really tune into the body and rest in a certain awareness for a little bit longer. So let's do five breaths with the awareness on the expansion of the rib cage and the softening or contraction of the rib cage. And again, you can put your hands here or you can just be relaxed and just feel things from the inside, whatever, whatever you can, however you can tune in more easily. All right, so eyes closed, five deep breaths, noticing the stretch of the chest and the relaxation of the chest, tuning into that movement. At your own breathing pace. Good. And now that you've had a moment to settle in, you've had a chance to notice your abdomen, you've had a chance to notice your rib cage expansion and your shoulder rising and falling. Now that you're a little more dropped in, you may be noticing that there's a piece of clothing or something that's constrictive that's holding the breath in unnaturally. You know, some of us <laughs> right now have some tight jeans on and I'm noticing wanting to undo the top button. You know, and so do that, make yourself comfortable. There, don't sit in clothing that is restrictive or too tight. There's just no reason to do that. You know, um, you may notice that, you know, your bra maybe is too tight. Unsnap it, you're at home, like be comfortable, you know? And, and we, don't wanna, we don't wanna restrict the breath. We just want the breath to be able to flow as easily as possible. So adjust your clothing if needed. And then let's settle into the posture that you want to meditate in. So um, for those of you that want to lie down, if your body is needing that today, go ahead and do that. And for those of you that want to sit in a chair, find your posture. I would recommend that you sit. If you, if you have low back problems and you need the support of the chair, that's fine. I'm, I'm using the back of the chair today. Some of you, if you get sleepy, especially, you may want to scooch forward onto the edge of your chair and um, you know not have your back leaning back into the chair. Um, so just see what your body is needing today. And you can find a comfortable spot for your hands. You can rest them you know, kind of in one another or palms down, or some people want to do a mudra or hand um, posture. So, and some of you might be sitting on a cushion around the floor and just find your posture. Good. And as we've talked about before, you can meditate with your eyes open if you want, if that feels safer for you or, or just feels better for whatever reason. And you can just keep your gaze soft and downward 
And I would encourage you to not be looking at the screen. But if that is what you're needing for today is, is the connection with a real person and you need to keep your eyes open and that's what feels skillful to you, then do that. You know, always listen to your own inner voice above anything that I say, because ultimately you are your own best teacher. Okay. And if it feels safe and comfortable, you can close your eyes as well, obviously. So let's just tune back in and we'll go through that um, progression that we did with, uh, that we were doing intermittently before. So I want you to first, for the first five breaths, we're gonna focus on our abdomen. Actually, you know what, let's do it a bit longer. Let's do 10 breaths. Let's do 10 breaths at the abdomen where you're focused on the abdomen. Let's do 10 breaths at the shoulders where you're focused on the rise and fall and the release especially. So the release of the out breath is what I want you to be feeling is how the shoulders can be really up and then they, oh, with the out breath, they just come right down. Hmm. Yeah. So we can help the body rest and relax and come to a centered, grounded place by not forcing relaxation, but really by tuning into the relaxation that's already happening anyway during every out breath. So we'll do the first 10 breaths are gonna be at the belly with the awareness of the belly pushing out with the in breath and then moving back towards the spine. And you know, some people feel very triggered focusing on the abdomen or the belly. And so if that comes up for you, that's not wrong or bad. Just notice that there's an awareness of like, oh, I don't wanna do this or I don't like this or, you know, that's all fine. You can notice your own judgments about things. And then shoulder rising and falling for 10 breaths, 10 complete breaths. And then we're gonna do the noticing the chest wall expansion and contraction for 10 breaths. And I'll, I'll cue you at each, at each point when it's been about 10 breaths for me. And you know, if it's not been 10 breaths for you, then just move to the next one, that's fine. And uh, if you're over 10 breaths, then obviously just keep doing the last one until I cue you. So, all right. So the first one is awareness at the belly. 10 breaths at your own speed, nice deep breaths down into the belly, just focusing the awareness on the physical sensations at the abdomen, mind wanders, bring it back. Notice how you're holding your mouth and your jaw. And if you haven't already let your jaw drop, do that. So the mouth is really kind of hanging open. The out breath is just kind of an allowing everything to let go. So you're letting the breath go through your mouth. You're breathing in through the nose if your nose isn't stuffed up today. Moving your awareness to the rise and fall of your shoulders, 10 breaths. 
tuning in to the out breath, especially tuning into the release. Allowing the out breath to be nice and slow and just letting go with each every with every out breath. Noticing that you can intentionally let go of your facial muscles too. So like the muscles around your eyes. See if with each out breath, you can tune into not just your shoulders relaxing downward, but your whole face relaxing downward, letting gravity do the work. And shifting your awareness now to the expansion of your chest wall, expansion of the ribs, the stretch that you feel when you breathe in and then the softening and relaxation as you breathe out, focusing on the rib cage, 10 breaths. Tuning your awareness to the pleasantness of the softening of the body with the out breath. And in this moment on this day, it might not feel pleasant to you. So actually, I'm going to retract that word even. Just being with the out breath, however it is today, without any expectations whatsoever. Good. Now for the rest of the meditation, you may decide to focus your awareness on one of these spots that we've already done. You may decide to focus your awareness on a sense of the entire body breathing. Or you may decide to focus your awareness on the tip of the nose and the nasal passages and feeling the breath go in and out of the nasal passages. So. What I would suggest is just picking a spot you know, or using the entire body and having that be your practice for today where 
you're paying attention on purpose. You're aware if judgments come in, you're softening, trying to release judgment. So paying attention on purpose in the moment with an attitude of compassion and a lack of judgment. That is mindfulness meditation. And that's what we're doing. Not to become good meditators necessarily, but so that these things start to weave into our lives in ways that allow us to live more full and expanded and joyful lives. Just want to emphasize that the point is not to become a good meditator, although sometimes that happens. The point is to live a fuller life, a more mindful life, a life with more choice and less reactivity. And that happens over time. Naturally, if we just do the practice, it just happens. So tuning in to the breath. Imagining that you can actually rest in the breath. Taking care of your body, noticing that if you're in a lot of pain today, that maybe it's just better to lie down for the next 20 to 25 minutes that we have left. Be comfortable. Loosen the tight clothing, be comfortable. Find a position and a posture that is causing you the least amount of suffering so that you can tune into the natural relaxation response of the body. Mm. And if you're having a lot of tension today or a lot of anxiety and the body, you're not noticing a relaxation response, don't be hard on yourself about that, okay? We have to be careful to not create expectations around everything. So sometimes meditation results in relaxation and a feeling of letting go. And sometimes it doesn't. And we just are with the tension. But if you're recognizing that somewhere in your body is doing resistance or holding and you can consciously soften or invite that muscle or that area of your body to soften, then do that. It's much easier to help the mind reach stillness or a calmer state if the body is in a place of as much comfort as we can give it as much relaxation as we could give it. And that's just not a switch, you know, it's a practice. So the practice is today is being in the body, noticing the breath in the body. And when there is thinking, to just label it thinking and to return to the breath and the body. And again, this is not so that we can become a good meditator. This is actually so that in your everyday life, these stories that we all have and these projections about other people that they yank us around less and less. We can see more clearly, oh, I'm believing this about so-and-so. This is causing me to feel angry. So we practice labeling thinking so that in our everyday lives, we can see when we're thinking and we can label it and we can decide, do I want to go down that thought train? Is this a useful or skillful thought path? And if it's not, maybe I can just label it thinking and let go into the next breath. And maybe even in one breath or two breaths or three breaths, I'll be back on the thought train. And that's not bad, that's not a problem. You're still meditating. There's this huge misconception in our culture that we're not meditating if our mind is really busy. That's a load of baloney. You're absolutely meditating. The meditating is the seeing that the mind has wandered and the coming back. It's not preventing all mind wandering. 
that can happen on some days where the mind gets more still, but that's not the point. All right, so I'm going to stop talking, give you some time to go inward, pay attention, and really try to bring the attitude of compassion and kindness even to that inner voice that wants to be critical and perfectionistic, even about how you do meditation. And just remembering that that's really not the point. The point is to build compassion, self-compassion. And that starts with the voice that you use with yourself when the mind wanders and when you label thinking. And then you come back. We're, we're really cultivating this way of being with ourselves that is very nurturing and is very sweet and is very soft. Rather than this like rigid, like dogmatic, you know, authoritarian voice that many of us know from different things in childhood and many of us have adopted as a strong inner voice, but it really for most people at least, for me at least, it doesn't work so well. Let's just try being a little bit softer and just noticing that inner critic if it arises. Just letting it be there and then just returning to the breath again. Hmm. And labeling thinking and letting it go.
As you stay tuned into your own inner world, I'm going to add sound and a poem by Mary Oliver about spring. So just allowing the words to be in the background, fall upon your consciousness while staying tuned into the breath and the body and seeing how the poem lands in the body. So we're used to listening from our minds. Listen from your body. Spring. This morning, two birds fell down the side of the maple tree like a tuft of fire, a wheel of fire, a love knot, out of control as they plunged through the air, pressed against each other, and I thought, how I meant to live a quiet life, how I meant to live a life of mildness and meditation, tapping the careful words against each other. And I thought as though I were suddenly spinning like a bar of silver, as though I had shaken my arms and lo, they were wings. Now, feeling the resonance of sound within your own body by doing three ohms, I'd invite you to join me. So in a moment, I'm gonna cue you to breathe in and take a deep breath in down to the bottom of your belly. And then as you breathe out, you're gonna make the sound ohm with your lips and your mouth. And so you're gonna do O for the first part and then mm for the second part of each ohm. And I would really invite you to tune into the feeling of the vibration in your body, wherever it is that you feel those sounds, feel them from the inside. So just like you were listening to the poem with the body, listen to the sound of ohm not so much with your ears, but with your body. Breathing in. May the fruits of our practice today spread outwards in all directions and help to awaken all beings everywhere. Mm. Bow to each one of you. Thank you for taking the time to go inward to bring more self-compassion into your life and mm, therefore more compassion to the world. I'm happy to take questions. Um, about 10 minutes before I have to get on my integrative psychiatry call that I have next. So happy to answer any questions if anybody has them. <laughs> and if you're taking time to slowly come back, mm, just enjoy that. If you have the time to Really stay present with your breath and your body because remember the point is not to become a good meditator. The point is to take this into your daily life and to notice your breath when you're in an argument with your spouse or a coworker. To 
be able to take a deep breath and pause before you respond to someone. Mm. I'm in this training right now called Heart IQ, Heart, like Heart, I, and then IQ. And um, I'm just learning so much more about being in the body in a moment to moment kind of way. And one of the things that they do in Heart IQ is whenever you start to feel tension or stress in the body, there's this practice of taking three breaths and making this audible, it's not, it's not a sigh, but it's, it's the releasing sound of whatever it is that's starting to tighten up in there. And it's, it's like, uh, three times. And I am just finding in my own body that um, I'm just not feeling so tight all the time and just finding so much more access to relaxation because it's not getting to that point where like my shoulders hurt and I have a headache. I'm seeing it sooner just by doing this really, really intentional practice of anytime I start to feel that tightening or a feeling of stress or anxiety, I'm doing those three breaths. And um, <laughs> it's, it's becoming quite a lovely habit. So I would, I would highly recommend it. Um, and I'd highly recommend Heart IQ too, if anybody's interested in bringing mindfulness and consciousness into relationships, uh, into conscious relationship. I'm doing it with my partner and we're both really benefiting. Uh, Mary says, thank you for the Ol Mary Oliver poem and the reminder to be less reactive. Yeah, and thank you for saying that, Mary, because I, I wanna just qualify what I said with the thing that when we are reactive, it's not about being self-critical then either. It's not about judging the reactive part. It's about recognizing that there's old stuff, there's old wounding, because if we react fast, it's because there's old wounding, there's suffering, there's a button to be pushed. We always think that, that it's about the person in front of us who's pushing our button, but if this button wasn't in us to be pushed, it would just, you know, it'd be like somebody telling you that, you know, you have a green toe or something ridiculous that makes no sense. Um, so it's not about judging that part either. Um, it's more so about bringing intention and slowing things down enough that we, that we can gradually become less reactive and having compassion for the parts of us that are reactive because they're still wounded and because we're all healing and we're all projecting and I mean, that's where all the suffering and the war and the everything in the world is coming from, right? It's just all these people reacting off of each other. Um, Jeannie says, thank you, Sarah. I love the change in body area each 10 breaths. Yay. Yeah, that was the first time I tried that. I don't know why that's never occurred to me before, but um, I think, you know, long meditations can feel really overwhelming and our mind can be like, oh, I can't focus for 40 minutes. So then don't, you know, focus for 10 breaths and the counting of the breaths can be, you know, can really help with the focus and the concentration too. And again, it's not about beating up on ourselves when the mind wanders, that's, that's what it does. That's being human. Um, it's just finding these little tricks and ways to help build focus and concentration um, and recognizing that on some days our mind's going to be all over the place and that's just the way it is and and on those days it's not that we don't want to practice you know because it's not pleasant we still need to practice but it's it's just not going to be blissful it's not and it and it, there might be a lot of tension and and that's okay. That's, that's the practice is coming to it every day with however you're showing up and finding compassion and loving kindness for yourself in the midst of it all, in the midst of everything that can show up in a human life. 
All right. Any more questions? Any more comments or questions? <laughs> All right. I'm going to assume there are no, oh, one more. Agree with Jeannie. Wonderful session. Thank you, Jane. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> you guys are all just enhancing my practice so much when I have to show up and um, guide like this. It really keeps me accountable um, to my own practice. So I appreciate it immensely sitting with you all. It's, it's a huge gift for me. And I really can't wait till we can be in person again. I don't know when that's going to be, but it will be fun to see everybody in person. DJ said, had some loud construction noise outside and had to focus on it as it was growing louder and louder. But when it stopped, it was lovely to feel gratitude. Nice, beautiful. And DJ, I feel like you just exemplified such a great point that we don't have to meditate in a quiet, sterile place. I mean, that's not realistic for most people to go you know, off to Spirit Rock or wherever, you know, these meditation centers where there's not much noise. Many people live in the city and, you know, people can meditate in the midst of New York City. So if that's true, we can certainly meditate in Madison, Wisconsin or wherever you're at. Um, but I love DJ, how you said that you focused on the sound. That's exactly it. If something is drawing your attention strongly, do you want to battle with it and be like, no, I won't feel you. I won't hear you. I won't see you. No. Like let the mind rest on what it's being drawn to. And usually what happens is the mind, because it's not the sound that's causing the irritation. It's your mind resisting the sound that's causing the irritation. So, you know, if you let go of the resistance, it usually becomes more pleasant. And there's plenty of stories about that, but DJ's example was perfect. So thank you, DJ, for that. All right. Okay, well, I'm going to jump off and get on my other call, but it was so lovely to be with you today.